everyone, I'm Megan Sullivan, creator of the podcast series History in Games, where I play video games and talk about the real history behind the game. In my last Game Explained video, I talked about the real-life origins of Tom Nook, the generous and possibly very old Tanuki with a heart of gold. Now I want to talk about my favorite villager, one whom I think is even more misunderstood than Tom Nook and has an even cooler connection to our history, Anka. Now some of you may be thinking, wait, who's Anka? Well, for those who don't know, Anka is a snooty cat who loves to gossip about her fellow villagers, refers to you as a peasant, isn't afraid to kick you out of her house, makes all sorts of crazy demands, and constantly insists she's the most fabulous villager in the whole wide world which admittedly doesn't always make her very likable. But as it turns out, Anka is a pretty cool cat with a real appreciation for history. And unlike all the other snooty villagers you meet in Animal Crossing, Anka has real reason to believe she should be treated like royalty. And it's found in her ancient heritage. Anka, whose name is a play on the ancient Egyptian word Ankh, meaning life, looks like she hails from Egypt, where for thousands of years cats were considered sacred. They were closely connected to a number of gods and goddesses, including the fearsome lion goddess Sekhmet and the gentler cat goddess Bastet. Both of these goddesses had major festivals held in their honor, which included lots of drinking, singing, and dancing. Cats were so revered that an inscription in the Valley of the Kings states, you are the great cat, the avenger of the gods, the judge of words, the president of the sovereign chiefs, and the governor of the holy circle. You are indeed the great cat. This reverence for cats may come from the early days of agriculture, when cats would chase off disease-carrying rodents and poisonous snakes from the fields. Thus the grateful Egyptians began to view the cat as a kind of demigod, one always looking out for them. And I mean literally. Since the cat's eyes glow in the dark due to the reflective nature, the ancient Egyptians believed cats could spot evil spirits lurking in the dark, which is why some Egyptians had their tombs painted with murals featuring cats with eyes outlined in gold. These sparkling eyes were thought to protect a person's mummy while their spirit enjoyed the afterlife. Now admittedly, Anka's more likely to give you the evil eye than guard you from it, but hey, that's only if you keep pestering her for no reason. In short, Anka's snooty attitude stems from the fact that she's used to being treated as semi-divine, a fact she tactfully refrains from pointing out during conversations. Instead, she talks about fashion, film, or the latest town gossip. But wait, doesn't that make her kind of… vapid? You'd think so. But once again, this is a case of Anka being misunderstood. She may love clothes and makeup, but her goal isn't to be a fashion designer or a movie star. No, Anka is much more ambitious than that. She wants to be an astronaut. And why not? I mean, who better to be an astronaut than someone with a connection to the ancient Egyptians, who were brilliant astronomers? For example, they built their pyramids and temples so that they would always align with the movement of the stars, planets, and even the equinoxes, like the Temple of Setet in Elephantine, possibly built to align with the heliacal rising of the star Sirius, also known as Sothis or Sopdet, whose appearance in the dawn sky signaled the annual flooding of the Nile and the start of the ancient Egyptian New Year. The ancient Egyptians also synchronized the mummification process so that it took 70 days, the exact amount of time Sopdet remains hidden below the horizon every year. They loved stars so much they even believed their souls would become stars in the afterlife and drew sophisticated star charts, also known as star clocks, on the inside lid of their coffins in order to help them either find their way to the stars or instruct them on how to behave as a star. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but all that requires complex mathematics and cats can't do math. Oh yeah? Well take a gander at Anka's makeup. See her fancy eyeliner? Part of that design might be based on math. The ancient Egyptians wore eyeliner around their eyes to protect them from the harsh desert sun, but they also sometimes drew a symbol around their eyes, known as the Eye of Horus, which they believed would bring them health and protect them from evil. And not only was this fancy eyeliner protective, it was mathematically correct. 
According to a very popular theory known as the Wadjet fractions, the different parts of the eye represent various mathematical fractions, which were used for specific measurements. Yes, the Egyptians were so smart it's possible that even their makeup was tied to math. What the hell get out of my makeup, math? At any rate, you could argue that Anka's eyeliner is proof she's a mathematical genius. Okay, so that's a stretch. But whether or not she's good at math, she still couldn't be an astronaut because you have to be able to read the spaceship's manual and it's not like cats can read and write. Right? Yeah, well, this one can. Not only does Anka proudly write prose about pickles, which by the way, the legendary Egyptian queen Cleopatra credited for her health and beauty. If you visit Anka's house, you'll notice the walls are plastered in hieroglyphics, and you have to be pretty smart to be able to read those. Hieroglyphics, sometimes shortened to hieroglyphs, which comes from the Greek holy words, which in turn comes from the Egyptian medu nacer, meaning the words of God, are pictograms composed of three types of signs, logograms representing words, phonograms representing sounds, and determinatives placed at the end of a word to help clarify its meaning. Hieroglyphics can be read from left to right, right to left, or up and down. Which way you read them depends on which way the hieroglyphics are facing. If they're all facing left, then the author wants you to read from left to right. If they're all facing right, then you read from right to left. And if the words are written from top to bottom, you'll still know which column to start with because the characters will all be facing left or right. There were tons of hieroglyphics, as many as over a thousand. Thus, later Egyptians decided to simplify their writing system by using an abbreviated form of hieroglyphics known as hieratic, which was easier to write and always written in the same direction, right to left. Both hieratic and hieroglyphics are found in Anka's home, suggesting she can read both. And although her floor and wallpaper don't seem to spell out anything in particular, the fact that hieroglyphics are everywhere shows Anka has a vested interest in them. But hieroglyphics are not the only evidence we have that Anka is smarter than she lets on. Take a look at the rest of her house. It's awesome. It's like a literal museum bursting with educational opportunities. For example, see the pyramid with a missing capstone smack in the middle of the room? It's an exact replica of the Great Pyramid of Giza, which dates to about 2560 BCE and took up to 20 years to complete. Built in honor of the Pharaoh Khufu, this pyramid was the world's tallest structure for thousands of years, right up until the Middle Ages. It was made using over 2 million stones weighing 3 tons each and was encased in polished limestone and possibly capped with gold, which would have made it shine brilliantly in the surrounding desert, suggesting Khufu wanted to make a real impression. By the way, fun fact, Anka's Japanese catchphrase, Khufu, is a possible play on the word Khufu, the name of the pharaoh associated with the Great Pyramid of Giza, and the Japanese words Kuku meaning giggle, and hoo hoo hoo, which is kind of like ha ha ha. As for her English catchphrase, me meow, that's pretty clever too, since mew or meow meant cat in ancient Egyptian. The pyramid isn't the only cool thing about Anka's house. Take a look at her makeup table, which is actually a gold sarcophagus with a set of scales on top of it. That too is very representative of ancient Egypt. But why? What were people weighing? Well, as it turns out, their heart. You see, the heart was a key to a person's rebirth in ancient Egypt. It was thought to be the source of human wisdom, emotion, memory, the soul, and even someone's personality. Therefore, the heart was the only organ not removed during mummification, so that the deceased could take it with them to the Hall of Judgment, where the god of the underworld, Osiris, along with 42 judges, would watch as the deceased's heart was placed on a scale that would reveal whether the person had led a good life or a bad life. If the heart was as light as a feather placed on the other side of the scale, it meant the person had led a good life and the judges would allow them to enter the field of reeds, an eternal paradise. If the person had lived a bad life, their heart was eaten by the personification of divine retribution, the goddess Amit, at which point the person ceased to exist. In short, the scales represent a crucial instrument needed in the afterlife. And then there's Anka's dining table. Also a sarcophagus, 
This table is home to a gorgeous collection of solid gold cutlery. The ancient Egyptians, or at least the pharaohs, had an impressive collection of gold dining ware, which they made sure to have buried with them so they could use it in the afterlife. They didn't just take their plates though, they also brought an impressive amount of food. Beef, poultry, bread, cheese, garlic, dates, pomegranates, wine, and beer. All of these have been found in ancient Egyptian tombs, ensuring the deceased had a fantastic banquet waiting for them when they reached the afterlife. And finally, on another gold sarcophagus, we see a model of a small squarish building. This model looks to be a nod to Egypt's earliest pyramid, the Step Pyramid at Saqqara, completed about 4,700 years ago and designed by Imhotep. No, not the character from the mummy movies, the real Imhotep an architect and court official credited as the inventor of the pyramids. In short, Anka's entire house is a loving tribute to all things ancient Egypt. Well, okay, maybe not that umbrella in the corner, and maybe not her gold toilet. The ancient Egyptians did have toilets, but they were made of stone, and instead of having built-in plumbing, they had a box of sand placed underneath them that was changed by hand. But hey, we can't really fault Anka for foregoing an ancient litter box in exchange for 21st century sensibilities. Besides, it's made of gold which fits the house and the theme of ancient Egypt perfectly. Now at this point you might think, is Anka supposed to be a mummy or something? She certainly has a lot of artifacts that represent the Egyptian afterlife, and didn't she used to wear bandages in previous Animal Crossing games? Well, it's unlikely she's a mummy, but not impossible. Archaeologists have found thousands of mummified cats buried in Egypt, and at least one cat named Tomyu or Tomyao was given an elaborate funeral by its owner, Prince Thutmosis. It's more likely, however, that Anka just really loves ancient Egyptian history. I mean, she's probably an Abyssian cat after all, one of the oldest cat breeds in the world and one loved by the ancient Egyptians. Therefore, it's only natural for her to celebrate her heritage right down to how she dresses. If you look closely, you'll see Anka is wearing an awesome headdress with a cobra on it. This cobra headdress, worn exclusively by the pharaohs, was originally representative of Lower Egypt, which by the way was where the cult of the cat goddess Bastet was located. And she's also wearing a layered necklace or collar, which cats may have actually worn. Well, at least one cat did. If you look at statues of the cat goddess Bastet, they often depict her wearing an elaborate necklace that includes an amulet in the shape of the Eye of Horus, which we talked about earlier. This shape has also been called the All-Seeing Eye or the Eye of Ra, who was the Egyptian sun god. Bastet was sometimes called the Eye of Ra in honor of her role as one of Ra's watchful guardians against the evil serpent Apep or Apophis, and so it made sense to portray her wearing a necklace bearing the symbol of Ra, and thus Anka wearing a necklace or a collar isn't out of place. As for her blue hair or wig, it wouldn't be out of place in ancient Egypt either. Thousands of years ago, Egyptian nobility loved wearing hair extensions and wigs, and it wasn't unheard of to dye their wigs red, green, or even blue. So there you go. In conclusion, it's clear there's more to Anka than meets the eye. Of Horus? Or maybe Ra? Even though she may seem shallow and snobby, she's actually smart, well-versed in history, and fashion savvy. And if you spend enough time talking to her, it turns out she's way friendlier than you'd think. Well, most of the time. Okay, some of the time. Hey, at least she doesn't make you hail her with Ankh Uja Seneb, which was frequently used in writing to wish the pharaoh life, strength, and health. See, isn't that nice of her? Which Animal Crossing villager is your favorite? Interested in learning more about them? Leave a comment below and be sure to follow me at Meg Sullivan on YouTube, M-E-G-H-A-N underscore I-G-N on Twitter, Celtic Queen on Twitch, and Celtic underscore Queen underscore Meg on Instagram. And of course, make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on Animal Crossing New Horizons. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Senapti!